drag these rounds all the way to time and it feels bad when you're in a winning position but you just don't have the time to clutch those wins and that is why Daniels found himself in this situation. Maybe we'll see a little bit more of an accelerated pace of play in order to cover that because you need the win absolutely from this position. Jackson Davies, meanwhile, going to be piloting a lost box here. Has the amazing Raikou and the amazing uh, Rayquaza that we've seen pop up here and there as some additional attackers to take advantage of Mirage Gate. Yeah, so both of these players are actually, we were just talking about it. You said these uh, were the interesting matchups for you, Skarzik, and we have a treat for you now because both of these players playing that comfy engine, the, mm -hmm. the Lost uh, or Origin Lost Box engine decks here, just different decks. So Daniel Altavilla is going to have that one Zekrom from Vivid Voltage. Uh, we do see both players playing that Radiant Greninja mm -hmm. as well as their one Radiant Pokemon in deck. Um, there is also the Kyogre as well for Dan Daniel's deck. Ah, yeah, the Kyogre with the Energy Recycler combo where you just try to get through your deck completely. Then you use that Energy Recycler to put the energy back in the deck to set up for that massive Aqua Storm to finish off the game. It's just a beautiful finale attack that your opponent has to be aware of. If they let the game go too long versus the Lost Origin, uh, the Lost Box deck, sometimes the play, the play when you're up against a single prize deck, you kind of know that the game is going to go long anyway. So you play a slower game, you just take your time with your setup and being a little bit more picky about your prizes. And this one just comes right through to say, well, too bad. You let my confies run wild. I flower selected and Cole rest through my entire list. And now the Aqua Storm is going to take two prizes. <laughs> yeah, well, we finally see it being pulled up. In we've been waiting matchup. for the Kyogre, yeah. Yes, we've been waiting for it on the stream. And there is definitely potential for that. We'll see how both of these players can navigate through this one prize versus one prize card matchup. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the single prize deck, you've got to take that first prize. Going second is going to be massive in this matchup. Just a couple comfy set up into getting four cards in the lost zone into a Cramorant is so pivotal. It forces your opponent to respond to you with a very similar play or they fall behind. If they don't take out that Cramorant beat for beat, you get two prizes up on them. Suddenly, you are, they're relying on Sableye or something like that to take the game back. Okay, so looking at the prize cards here, Daniel has the, has the Snorlax, the Oranguru, and the Sableye. So a lot of Pokemon and a Battle VIP pass in the prize card. Scoop up net, um, mm. just one of them. So there's obviously going to be more in this deck for sure. But Jackson actually has two scoop up nets on their side. Also a Battle VIP pass in the prizes. Ornay Rod, a Cold Wrist, and then two energies for both players. So those are actually could potentially be some sticky situations with those prize cards. Of mm -hmm. course, this deck definitely pays a lot of consistency um, with fours of those lines a lot of times. But here we go. We are jumping into our Swiss round 14 here in day two of our Toronto regionals. And Daniel's opening us up, has the comfy in the active spot and just needs to find a way to get some, uh, some extra flower selecting going. Just going to start off with it. Got a Psychic Energy oh, and a Cramorant being offered. I really like the Cramorant here, but with these lists, you have to be very picky about your energy. If you send them to the Lost Zone, then you can't bring them back into the deck yes. with the Energy Recycler at the end. Yeah, definitely starting already with a difficult decision here. Only two Cramorant in the deck for Daniel Altavilla, but opting to go with that energy, valuing that uh, over this Cramorant. So <laughs> starting off with the tough, the difficult flower selectings for mm -hmm. sure. It's easy when, you know, you're on like turn three and it's like two battle VIP pass, you know what I mean? But Yeah, uh, we're going to see, I, that in really this set, happens. we are going to see the full gamut mm -hmm. of the world shattering flower selectings of, oh, do I want my cult? my coal rest or something goes to the lost zone. But here we go, Quick Ball gonna discard the Energy Recycler, gonna keep looking through the le list here, hopefully wants a second Comfy, and needs a way to switch this out of the active to get another flower selecting up and running, doing, doing a quick prize search here as well. Yeah, there are two Energy Recycler in deck, so there is still the option for that Kyogre uh, play, even if the Energy Recycler's in mm -hmm. the, one of them is in the discard. But yeah, just going through the deck now here. Eyeballing the Radiant Greninja, mm -hmm. get a little bit of extra card draw. Yeah, so that's another huge card in this matchup for both players. Of course, they both play it. Um, getting uh, that 90 damage on two Pokemon is going to be huge because as often as you can, you want to be taking 
dual knockouts. You know, mm -hmm. we actually saw this yesterday in the Lost Box mirror from um, Alex Shemansky going with that goon into the Sableye to double knockout Comfies. Mm -hmm. That's huge for these matchups because you need to be winning oh in that prize Oh my goodness. The concealed cards pulling Comfies Two into comfies. the hand. Wow. So now the Lost Zone is opening wide to receive more nourishment and hopefully Cramorant can top <laughs> off this turn to have another threat. Do if we have we, a way yeah, to get this coffee we, out of the active, though, is the question. I see the mana there, being uh, in. There's, there's an escape, escape rope. rope. Nice, yeah. nice. Um, I, there isn't a Cramorant, though, because one is in the, the Lost Zone right now. But there You're could going be first, potential. So yeah. the Cramorant can come down as a bit of a surprise. Going to actually chill out and just leave the comfy here. The Cramorant's not a big threat as of yet because there's no uh, comfies or uh, anything kind of threatening right now. Well, Daniel's well, going to take it slow. It could potentially be a threat here uh, for Daniel on Jackson's side. Oh, you have to battle <laughs> VIP pass. Here we go. Depending on what happens here. That's like you were saying before, Scarzy. That's a huge play. <laughs> oh, I love that little hesitation. Daniel pulled the deck and then said, wait, let me get my pen. He's going to take a very deep look at the deck right now. Um, you can see keeping track of the energy is so important for Jackson's deck because the amazing Raikou and the amazing uh, Rayquaza require very specific energy yeah. attachments to use their respective attacks. You have a buffer, right? You have to consider your deck, your prize cards, and what you've sent to the Lost Zone already when it comes to what you're able to sacrifice off of a Flower Selecting or a Coal Resist Experiment. Yeah, most definitely. That's why we saw the energy count happening from Jackson's uh, side of things. Um, there, there definitely is more potential, I think, for Jackson to make some interesting plays um, with those Pokemon in this deck. So we'll see what route they decide to go down for this matchup. I assume that both these players are pretty familiar um, with the matchup, but maybe not for those particular techs in the deck. So Jackson having uh, two Pokemon that we I don't even think have seen at all on the stream yet. Yeah. With that Raikou, uh, amazing Raikou and uh, Rayquaza. So this is going to be definitely interesting to see what happens. But as you said, Scarzi, still going through the deck, making sure everything is being tracked it, it, because that is, is so essential. This is a very uh, specific deck, a very precise deck, no doubt. If an extra energy goes to the Lost Zone that you didn't account for, you go for a Mirage Gate and then come up empty, You there is just nothing you can do because if you miss a beat, especially in a single prize, matchup and your opponent takes two or three prizes back to back to back or is able to knock out your not uh, your attacker then you just lose all tempo it's very specific and you can see that jackson recognizes that this match is balanced on a razor's edge both of these players need the win to advance and set themselves up for a chance to get into top eight yeah definitely most definitely uh, especially when you are staring down a Radiant Greninja over there. You know, if Daniel can pull off some incredible plays, not mm -hmm. that many cards in the hands. I didn't really get to see what else was in there besides the escape r rope, but it is definitely scary when you know there's a Radiant Greninja there that can be doing some damage. You really have to pick and choose what you're going to end up benching here with the Battle VIP Pass, but we are going to see that Comfy come down as well as a uh, Radiant Greninja on Jackson's end here as well. Now it's just up to, can we see enough cards um, hit the Lost Zone in order to take that first knockout potentially with the Cramorant? Mm -hmm. Overall, I think it is going to be a pretty high chance that Jackson can pull it off here, obviously. I love that both well. play a second battle VIP pass. Yeah, it's, it's done. <laughs> it's locked in. It's got to be. But I love that both players are favoring the Radiant Greninja as well. It's so important. You can get a manual attachment to it and then uh, start threatening that Mirage Gate right away to set up the Moonlight Shuriken. Uh, also, the, it's, it's, there's an option there. If you manually attach to the Radiant Greninja, then you can't do the attach retreat on your Comfe to get an extra flower selecting. So if you know, the switch cards and the escape ropes all come together, maybe there is that leftover energy attachment to maintain a higher threat level on the Greninja. So this is huge, Jackson. Uh, being able to take out that Manaphy with that second battle VIP pass is giant. Just mm. making sure that you can protect your bench 
um, is definitely going to be a huge thing. Luckily, neither of these players prize the mana fee. There are a lot of Pokemon on the prizes for Daniel, and as well as Jackson, of course, going second, you always want to have a Colrus, but there is one in the prize cards as well. I don't think I saw one in hand, but that's also a great way to kind of uh, utilize getting cards that you need to get into the Lost Zone. But uh, we'll see if we can see it potentially off some flower selectings. Yep, we got the first one coming up. I love that Jackson turned that energy sideways when he sent it to the discard pile off of the Radiant Greninja. Has to keep ev the location of every energy at top of mind at all times. Once we start, uh, now the engine has left the station, we're going to start making these difficult choices, sending things to the Lost Zone. This style of Lost Box, where your energies are much more important, you make weird decisions where you have to keep an energy over a coal rest sometimes just to keep your options available and your attackers available. Quick Vault finds Luminion. Luminion hits the bench to pull Colress's experiment from the deck. Jackson Davies is going second, so Colress is playable here. Sees five cards from the top, can add three to the hand, and the remaining two go to the lost zone. So that's three out of four already for this Cramorant. Yeah, and when you have that Colrus, it's uh, pretty easy to get to that point, and that's exactly where Jackson needs to be, getting those cards into the Lost Zone to pull off this uh, prize, one prize attack, because you want to be able to take that prize lead as soon as you possibly can. And again, hard decisions all around the board. Has to study the hand, has to study the cards that are offered. Jackson already sculpting an idea around this matchup. You know, the amazing Raikou with the amazing shot attack. This attack, uh, it does 120 to the active and then another 120 to another benched Pokemon. Maybe Jackson can weave that in before the Manaphy comes through. After the Radiant Greninja has been put on the bench, Daniel is kind of already saying, I want to protect my bench for sure. Oh yeah, both these players definitely need to be protecting bench, but especially for for Daniel um, being faced up against cards like that. And of course, Daniel doesn't know what is in Jackson's deck. I mean, unless they're friends and they know each other's <laughs> decks. But um, yeah, so pulling out plays like that, it's really important that you do it at the exact specific time that you want to, because that is information that you're giving up about your deck as well that could potentially win you um, oh. a game down the line. Beautiful. So. We've got the attach retreat into the comfy, into a flower selecting. Really easy battle VIP pass. Um, there is four in the lost zone for the Cramorant, but not another way to get this comfy out of the active. Overall looks pretty solid for Jackson right now, and Daniel's responding with the concealed cards. Discards a lightning energy, draws two more cards from the deck. Trying to see what we got here. I see the Manaphy in hand. Hopefully it'll get that set up here pretty soon. A, ooh, an escape rope and a mirage gate being offered. Going to keep the escape rope. Focusing on getting cards in the lost uh, zone is a much higher priority, of course, than having your payoffs for them. By the time you get seven cards in the lost zone, you'll have your extra mirage gates by the time you need them. All right, so we are going to be seeing that escape rope being played for Daniel to get in to another flower selecting here. Of course, Jackson just promoting another comfy as mm -hmm. well, so... Not really utility there, but you need to be getting these cards into the Lost Zone. There's three right now, but we are going to see even more with this Colrus into the Lost Zone. So again, just trying to um, map these cards into the Lost Zone and make sure that you can pull off the, the attacks that you're wanting to do. Mm -hmm. Looks like, um, of course, that second Cramorant that's in deck not going to the Lost Zone. Otherwise, there's no Cramorant options for Daniel, so that's pretty important to keep there. Opting to do two choice belts because they are completely useless, pretty much. I, well, mm -hmm. not completely. <laughs> Obviously, we see Aluminium down there, so it's not a completely useless thing, but uh, still, two in the Lost Zone here as, long, as well as another Combi. Yeah, there's no reason to uh, prioritize taking down Luminion. You can set up the two-turn knockout if you want to with Rain and Greninja or play towards the Sableye yes. later on. And it's so much easier to take out some of these smaller targets, right? Eventually bringing up a Mana Fee or, because you can just drop the, uh, the counters down once you do get to the Sableye. Daniel at five cards in the Lost Zone already. I love that both of these players are off to a very solid, even start and the mutual respect with the Mana Fee here. 
Yeah, so Daniel now, I'm sure, realizing what is in the prize cards as well. We did see that um, unfazed fat Snorlax in the prize cards as well mm. as the Orangaroo, which could be something that could have been brought out too. I think there was another Pokemon in there as well. But So seeing that that is uh, in the prize cards, opting to choose that Sableye, um, which, of course, won't come online until there is 10 cards in the Lost Zone there. But that's really what this deck is all about, oh, yeah. Scarzig, as you were mes uh, mentioning before. You have to line up the damage. Beautiful on knockout. <laughs> Beautiful knockout. That's spit innocently for the knock. Um, but you have to be able to line up the damage as much as you can to take multi-prize knockouts all in one swoop turn. So. Mm. Uh, potentially. So yeah, that we're going to see the first uh, prize card being taken over on Daniel's side here. Um, Jackson did have four cards in the Lost Zone, I believe there. So was able to use the Cramorant, but didn't have a pivot out option for it. So yeah, starting so off with that flower selecting. With the, with the Cramorant coming through for Daniel first. This means that in order to fix the prize trade, has to eventually make use of the Raikou or get around this Manaphy for the Radiant Greninja. We could see Jackson shift gears here massively to just begin flooding as many cards as possible into the Lost Zone and playing towards a Sableye just to start bringing damage counters down and looking to end the game that way. I've seen both. I've seen the line work and not work. Sometimes the Sableye is used too early and doesn't get you enough tempo, enough of a buffer. But if you if it's employed at just the right time, you take out a couple comp phase with it, then your opponent's kind of left dead in the water. And Daniel, with only five cards in the Lost Zone, you know a couple coal rests is still going to get you there. So it is a hard decision to make. And this is on top of all of the energy juggling that Jackson Davies has to do here. Air Balloon onto the comp phase, fantastic as well. Finally, having a free pivot is so key for getting, you know, one or two extra cards into the Lost Zone whenever you'd like. Yeah, so one thing to note, as I was talking about before, Daniel does play that Snorlax in mm -hmm. the list. Um, I believe there is one Snorlax, yeah, but it is in the prize cards. Jackson does not play the Snorlax. The Snorlax could actually come um, into play pretty heavily in this matchup because of the unfazed of that ability doesn't allow you to place any damage counters on it uh, like a lot of Pokemon can do mm -hmm. uh, here. So that is super important. And then it's also pretty bulky as well with 150 HP. So it makes a lot of the math kind of add up a little bit weird and you can kind of tank with it a little bit. But of course, that's not an option. But it also is not in Jackson's oh, deck. Oh, beautiful. So Has uh, the boss's orders now to get the Manaphy off of the bench and get that into the discard pile. Takes a knockout and now opens up massive threat potential here with the Raikou and the Radiant Greninja. Yeah, that's definitely huge here. I was actually about to just mention that um, after the Snorlax conversation because taking out the Mana Fee is definitely another strategy you can take to unlock, of course, the ability to use your Radiant Greninja. Um, if your opponent does have ways to get back the Mana Fee, which is a possibility, um, in their deck, then it could just come back out, but I don't think there is going to be uh, any way. How many rod is he on? I don't two, know if it's... Two ordinary rods, so we could see um, the Mana Fee go back into the deck and then be drawn out again from mm -hmm. Daniel um, to make sure that there is no... Well, you could still protect your bench because Jackson true, true. is now at five in the Lost Zone, so unlocking that Mirage Gate does unlock some scary plays um, potentially, and Daniel could be sitting in a pretty awkward position depending on what happens here mm -hmm. in the next few turns. Yeah, just agonizing over this Colrest's experiment. Another Mirage Gate potentially going to the Lost Zone for Daniel. There's one in there already, so that's two out of four that are going to be off the table now. And I wonder if Daniel is going to try to go for a rescue Manaphy line, play even more defensively. After taking that first knockout with Cramorant, that is a great way to kind of keep your opponent from taking a double prize turn, especially with the Snorlax, you know, being able to just tank one of yeah, those other uh, attackers. That hand is huge. So I, I'm pretty <laughs> sure I saw that uh, Ordinary Rod in there. I'm sure there's some sort of way to search out another Pokemon potentially. Yeah, I think I saw a Quick Ball in there as well. That Zekrom going into the Lost Zone. Um, definitely a good play into specific matchups like uh, Lugia, but not really applicable here in this matchup. Yeah, fortunately getting an easy decision here. Just 
taking scope of all the resources in the hand, right? In these lost box mirrors, there's no hand disruption. The player is just flower selecting and call rest and fill up completely on a buffet of cards. And Daniel is looking at the escape rope now. Because it gives Jackson the option to switch here, you aren't going to be able to take out the Cramorant necessarily. But all of the Pokemon here that are on the bench are ones that Jackson maybe wants to hold on to, right? The, the Oranguru. And he decides to promote the Radiant Greninja. Needs, it's forcing Daniel to have one more switch, of course, to bring the, camp, the Cramorant back up into the active. And because that Manaphy was taken care of, Jackson doesn't mind the Radiant Greninja going down because you still have that Raikou that gives you that spread damage as well. Yeah, one thing that's really important if you are expecting a knockout is to make sure you put a Pokemon up that um, can take a hit um, mm -hmm. and not potentially get knocked out because then you are not losing the prize race again. I wonder if Daniel's actually been hitting a lot of Lost Box Mirrors because you can see how agonizing this match is. You have the, the first priority of getting cards into the Lost Zone, but then you have to think so much about what sorts of counterplays your opponents are going to be doing to snipe your bench and really disrupt your ability to attack once you do complete that first objective. A lot of thinking going down. Already almost 30 minutes ticking down, and we're still in the first game. Only one prize card taken for both players. Yeah. But once, look, 10 cards in the Lost Zone, now this is where the game is truly going to explode. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Sableye, Sableye now online. has been unlocked. That lost mine move put 12 damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon in any way you like. That mm -hmm. is the key thing here as well. I mean, 12 damage counters is great, but being able to split up those damage counters exactly where you need to get these knockouts is huge. So having that online first is its definitely uh, a lot of times in these matches, it's sort of a race to that position. And uh, Daniel has gotten there now going to Ordinary Rod back in in that Manaphy as well into the deck, I think is what I saw there. Mm -hmm. uh, also super important, of course, to protect your bench and block those Radiant Greninja uh, plays as well as the uh, amazing Raikou. Mm -hmm. It um, yeah, it's going to protect against those two cards, but the Sableye, because of the way the attack is worded, you just drop those damage counters wherever. So yeah, it doesn't count is as like the uh, damage, damage of an attack. Yeah. So it is a great exactly. way to get around Manaphy. Mirage Gate number three now being employed to attach to the Comfey. That way we have the attach of for turn onto the Sableye, and then the Mirage Gate to accelerate onto the Comfey to get the retreat into this lost mine attack. And I yep. wonder where Daniel wants to place these damage counters. Yep, the Manaphy is not going to be protecting against those, of course. Um, actually, a, a fun thing to know as well, Jackson does play uh, Zigzagoon. Uh, okay. Daniel does not. So that's another thing we could see some major plays here with placing these damage counters. But yeah, Daniel does not play Zigzagoon, so that's going to come mm -hmm. into play, I think, a little bit here. Of course, taking out that Comfy is super important. And then looks like placing the rest onto the Oranguru. Um, so as I was talking about before, you kind of want to put up a Pokemon that is um, not going to get one shot, essentially, by yeah. another Pokemon. So a Oranguru with that 120 HP. So that is going to... Actually, I think it was switched here. So yeah, it's a, it's a very difficult decision, right? Because you have to figure out where am I going to place these damage counters to set up yes, several yeah. turns ahead of time. 130 HP on the Radiant Greninja, so taking that one, it's now going to be a um, 120, mm -hmm. that Manaphy as well. So yeah, exactly, S placing these uh, damage counters to be able to take multiple knockouts at once in the future. And this is a very strong position right now for Daniel to be in um, against Jackson, who still only has five cards in the loss zone at this point. Yeah, with the Comfy going down, Jackson is very reliant on a Corez's experiment or something to keep this engine up and running, getting those cards down. And if we see a retreat on the Oranguru to get the Cramorant into the active, you get the knock on the Sableye, then Daniel can simply promote the other Cramorant, stay ahead in the prize race. Fortunately, Jackson does have the Corus's experiment. There's an energy there that needs to be kept. Energy Recycler looks good. Quick Ball might be a response as well to get the Raikou if needed. Jackson's going to take a quick note, again, of another energy location. Super important for this list. I believe that's another Colrus as well in oh, the options. Oh, yeah, another hard choice. There, uh, Mirage Gate in there too. So deciding to 
uh, Lost Zone, the Switch Cart, and a Grass Energy. So, so does keep the Quick Ball, has plans for it. Without the um, without the Switch Cart, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get this Oranguru out of the active. But at the same time, uh, now that you're up to seven, you have your Mirage Gate, this deck is much more based around Mirage Gate than Sableye. Mm -hmm. um, Jackson is now definitely online. Here comes the Raikou finally hitting the bench with an energy attachment from hand and a Mirage Gate. We can meet the requirement for that amazing shot attack. One grass, one lightning, one metal. Let's see it. Yeah, and the Mana Fee was shuffled back into the deck on Daniel's side, but it is not out on the field. Actually, the bench is full here, so no bench protection in that sense. Of course, Daniel wouldn't know that uh, Raikou is being played until it is played. So mm -hmm. now that knowledge is out there, and we could see um, now Daniel realizing, oh, okay, this is now in play, and uh, this could get pretty spicy here. Of course, that Mirage Gate is now unlocked with the seven cards in the Lost Zone, so this is huge. There are, um, there is other plays. I believe Jackson does play Raihan, three Raihan as well in okay. the deck. So there's future plays for that, of course, marking exactly where every single energy is, keeping track of all those energies, which is super important here. Yeah. But putting those two onto that Raikou. Yeah, when you see the, the grass energy, Daniel, I think, kind of knew that there was going to be something happening. And fortunately, Jackson was kind of able to keep that hidden until almost right now, only discarding lightning energy and uh, psychic energy. But now we've got the Raikou fully powered up. Oranguru is going to use Primate Wisdom, put a card on top and see one more. And we just need a way to get this out of the active. And there's the scoop up net. Raikou is promoted into the active. An amazing shot's going to take two prizes here. We can take out the Sableye and maybe the Cramorant. Yeah, so if you're doing 120, um, you definitely want to take take those prize cards, especially because uh, Manaphy is still in play here. So Bench is still protected, even if that Radiant Greninja is still in play on Daniel's side. Mm -hmm. So I, I definitely think uh, securing those two and limiting your opponent from having uh, attackers is very important. Yeah, the we already saw that Daniel just used an Ordinary Rod. Uh, Jackson used an Ordinary Rod, and Daniel also got the Sableye back. So if we know there's one Cramorant in the Lost Zone. If there's not a way to recover this Cramorant and get a return KO on this Raikou right now, it's going to get another rep of that amazing shot. So here we go. Concealed cards on the Radiant Greninja to draw two cards. Daniel's finding a way to get out of the situation. Has to deal with the Raikou now. Yeah, another fun thing to note, because Goon is in the list for Jackson, it actually can take a knock on the Greninja if um, that damage counter is placed from the Raikou. Oh, yeah. So here we go. Colrest's experiment offering up five cards. Heavy Ball not going to do a lot. A little bit of energy and a scoop up net. But you've already got ten cards in the Lost Zone. No reason to stack more. Only just four flower selecting purposes, right, to see one more card. Yeah, and the tides have turned here in this match because of that amazing Raikou there. So that is such a huge card uh, in this matchup here for Jackson. And revealing it, as I said, right at the correct moment where you think it is the most pivotal mm -hmm. for your game plan. It's a surprise factor. You take things out. So whatever your opponent was then mapping for your next couple, their next couple of turns, they are no longer able to do, and they have to scramble to find a new strategy last second. The Raikou is going to be at maximum effectiveness here in the first game, and it has had exceed, it's absolutely exceeded my expectations, certainly, to flip this game on its head. Daniel really scrambling. If you can't get the knockout this turn, and Jackson just takes two more prize cards, just not even, just ignore the Radiant Greninja, just knock out two Confes, and one prize left remaining with a Cramorant still on the bench. Um, it's going to be the first game going to Jackson for sure. Here's a scoop up net from Daniel. Is it pulls two the confe. prize cards remaining or three? Uh, still cards. three prize cards yeah. remaining, yeah. Still three prize cards Another remaining. Another flower selecting. The deck is getting very thin. Can Daniel set up some sort of Kyogre play here right at the last second? Here's Sableye coming back down. The yeah. amazing Ooh, Raikou only has uh, 110 HP, so Sableye's Lost Mind can just dump everything it has onto the Raikou. Yeah, Daniel managed to pull it off and stay in this game. That is definitely uh, very, very important to do here for Daniel. You need to take out uh, this thing that is threatening a potential game in the next 
two turns here for you. So that is super important here, and that is most likely what we're going to see mm -hmm. from Daniel's side. And you can see the planning here. Daniel is mapping out the hand, the number of cards that are left in the deck, so that when you use the Aqua Storm attack, um, either it's taking the game, or if it's not immediately ending the game, you aren't decking yourself out on the next turn. So the Energy Recycler seems to be all moved into position now. And it's just a matter of who gets that one leftover damage counter. <laughs> no, actually, we're, I think we're seeing some split damage here from Daniel's side of things, um, potentially. I don't know. There's a lot of dice that was just laid out, and I'm very confused as to uh, where it's going here. Yeah, because the math was set up like very weird early on, right, with yeah. the Sableye, maybe trying to take a triple prize turn. So we'll see where this all lands. The Manaphy can definitely go down here. This is why I don't think I would ever opt to play this deck because this is a <laughs> lot of difficult decisions here. But it looks like Daniel is mapping out a turn where a ton of prize cards can be taken. Uh, yeah, in the he next said he's setting up for the Aqua Storm. The Aqua Storm only hits benched Pokemon. Yep. And so he's, I think, trying to set up some sort of checkmate scenario where the Aqua Storm is going to come through, get the knockouts on the bench, right? A Pokemon, uh, the Luminion, V, and then uh, two other Pokemon at the same time. Well, you also have to think, yeah, because it is uh, a bit of an awkward position, too. I mean, Jackson still needs to take three prize cards. Yeah. And you're only going against one prize card um, Pokemon, whereas Luminion is on the board here for Jackson. So that is going to be a two prize card Pokemon as well. So Daniel now going down to three, of course, tying it up here. Jackson down to three. That Manaphy is off the board now as well, which is huge oh because uh, you need to be God. able to hit the bench. Uh, with your attacks. Yeah, once the, now that the Manaphy is down, it means that Jackson can't respond with the double prize KO. And after magnificently setting up this, be this bench damage, either Sableye comes through for another rep or Kyogre and that Aqua Storm is going to clean things up. You discard the top five cards of your deck and then you just do 50 damage for each one you've discarded. It's a massive burst of damage, and it means that this Luminion V is a massive liability. Yeah, each energy that you discard in, well, it's any energy that you discard in that way, but what a lot of um, players do, they just energy recycle so that they know, yep. uh, you know, when they get down to the bottom of their deck, mm -hmm. they energy recycle, get all this energy back in, and that is a potential uh, way to Get a bunch of knockouts in the last, like, hoorah of your deck, essentially. All right. So now Jackson responding by using an ordinary rod to put the Manaphy back in the deck. You can see it's still pretty thin there, Shelby. Not as worked through as Daniel's. But hopefully there is a way to get this bench protection back out of the deck and down to, you know, Manaphy has to stop a tidal wave here that's coming. We've been thinking, we've yeah. been praying to see the, the Kyogre for so long, and now that Daniel has massively telegraphed that attack, Jackson is doing everything to try to respond. Well, and that really is what it comes down to because neither of these players, um, Lost Box, doesn't really play like hand disruption mm -hmm. in their decks. So you're just stacking cards, and that's exactly what Daniel has. And you have all of your resources essentially in your hand for you, able, for you to be able to map out any strategy that you want. So really it just comes down to can I get into the cards I need and not have to go through a difficult choices as far as the law zoning process and then get into my strategy um, and hopefully it pays out and yeah. you, you take so it many, over your opponent. <laughs> there's I so mean, many factors at hands, play yeah. during this point because the players are looking at each other's discard piles, at each other's lost zones. In order to make the correct play, you're trying to see yeah. It's you who, know, whose strategy will trump the other strategy, essentially, is what it comes down to. And that's why it's so pivotal to decide, okay, what am I going to choose to bench? When am I going to choose to bench it because of those damage counters being put down? Um, so Jackson going in with another Colrus here. I see a switch card. I saw a couple energies. Another Ordinary Rod is great. Just keep using this Manaphy over and over again. Colrus Experiment. And Ordinary Rod actually going to the Lost Zone. We know that this game is in its final stages. Probably don't need to call rest one more time. So many cards in the hand. And a Raihan we see. And the Zigzagoon is there too. Can Jackson set up 
I'm just trying to figure out a if, yeah, if there's a way for Jackson to be able to take three prize cards here before Daniel pulls off a potential um, last move and takes the three needed to win. You know, it, that's really what it comes down to. Can Jackson take three prize cards here, or will Daniel be able to take three prize cards first? Yeah, that's pretty much what we're looking there's at. There's like the zigzagoon, uh, the double zigzagoon, like Sableye play that we've right. seen before, but decides to just take the one knockout against the Sableye. The uh, Manaphy does protect the bench from the second part of Amazing Shot, but now Jackson Davies, two prizes remaining, can take two prizes next turn. It looks like he's already set it up. Double scoop up net, the remaining two cards. So the double zigzagoon play a little bit out of his reach right now. Yep, and now it is up to Daniel to take three prize cards on this turn um, in order to take this game. So there is possibility for that to happen potentially mm -hmm. with the Kyogre. Um, play, but we're going to see there's going to be two Sable Eyes and two Energy shuffled back into the deck here um, with the Ordinary Rod. And actually, can we see, me see. the three so prize Cramorant. cards from the uh, Sable Eye? Yeah, so let me see. Cramorant, yeah, let's do some math here. Yeah, so Cramorant has 50 HP left, and then Luminion has uh, 150 HP left. And then we've got Radiant Greninja with 110 HP. Oh, uh, Manaphy at 70. So I think that it, Lumineon has to get taken down here. And I think you stay ahead in the prize trade. As long as Dan Jackson doesn't have a way to remove Daniel's Manaphy, I think he's done it. As long as he takes down the Luminion V here and takes two prizes, sets himself to one prize remaining, gets the Sableye back in the hand off of the Ordinary Rod, and has the Bird Keeper for a switch here to get the Comfy out of the active, promote that Sableye, and draw three cards. This is most likely going to result in that Psychic Energy. One more. There it is in the hand. We've got the Attached to the Sableye and Lost Minds coming through. I've already demonstrated that my math is not quite where it needs to be, Shelby, so I need your help <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if this is to... just a two-prize turn or a three-prize turn. Asui and Heavy Ball looking through the prizes as well. There's some other piece that Daniel needs here. can find the Snorlax, too. We've seen this so much at, towards the finale of these Lost Zone mirrors where a Snorlax is so important. It's just a Pokemon that your opponent cannot one-shot because it has so much base HP. And this is still the first game. So much strategy and back and forth, plays and counterplays have gone into this situation. And now at the finale, you know, Jackson managed to scrounge up that Manaphy back onto the bench, forcing Daniel to forego the Kyogre play that he was heavily telegraphing and go for the Sableye. Oh, well, we did just see the energy recycler here. I don't think, uh, I'm not sure if the math adds up to take two, three prize cards. I don't think it does here for Daniel. So I think we are actually going to see the Kyogre play uh, potentially from Daniel if everything is in shape to add Look that Look at up. this or hand. We just He's got it fanned out in like yeah, six layers to I, take stock of everything. I mean, that's the entire deck is like in the hand right now for mm -hmm. Daniel. The energy recycle the recycler just popped off here. The Kyogre's already in hand. So it's, we're, I, I think that's what we're going to see here. I think In order it does to take three prize cards, that is a potential to happen. Oh, I'm looking. To, to kind of boil this down, Shelby, yeah. I just want to reiterate, I think that Daniel might be in a position of taking two prize cards this turn, praying that the Manaphy stays alive against the Raikou, goes around the Manaphy for two prizes, okay. Oh yeah, true, I didn't even think about that. The Manaphy is just blocking the bench from Kyogre to even happen. Mm -hmm. so that's not a potential there, so having to take and out And Daniel the is now saying, okay, Manaphy has to protect my because bench from this amazing Raikou. Yeah. Jackson has a way to bring this up. I don't think there is in this list. I have to double check. Uh, is there, there's no like Serena? There's um. no Vita gust up. There's a Raihan. They're usually Lost Box plays like one boss's orders if it can squeeze it in. And Jackson, yes, is on one boss's orders. I believe that got sent to the Lost Zone a long time ago. Uh, I didn't see if it did or not. I feel like that would be a pretty important card to might keep. I think, I think he might, used it, it already. I think he used it to KO the Manaphy the first time. 
Oh, I th actually, I think you're right, yeah. And there is only one in deck, so. This game wow, has gone on yeah, so it's long. Gone back and you forth. can see how even I'm struggling to keep up with the resources, and the players have to do the same thing because if Jackson forgot he used the bosses and he's like playing towards a line he doesn't have, but. I think that Daniel managed to pull it off after all, just taking out the Manaphy using Sableye's Lost Mine attack and sets up a checkmate with the Kyogre. Yeah, it gets so intricate in these um, last couple of turns of play. So let me think. The way Jackson gets two prizes this turn is with the Galarian Zigzagoon. The two scoop-up nets that he would need to pull off that combo are the two remaining prize cards. Is there enough scoop-up nets to recycle the Galarian Zigzagoon over and over? We've got Raikou, uh, excuse me, Raihan accelerating energy to Raikou and then searching the deck. I don't know if the resources are there. It needs to be headbutt tantrum, headbutt tantrum into a lost mine. Yeah, that, that actually is the only way because of that mana fee blocking the bench, too. <clears throat> yeah, so this is uh, this is sort of what we saw in the, towards the end of the last set, that the players are analyzing every single last-minute play they possibly could have in order to make it through here. But overall, I think that because those scoop up nets are in the prize cards, Jackson simply does not have the means to output enough yeah. damage past the mana fee, and Daniel has uh, clutched this one up in the 11th hour. Comfy comes to the active after the retreat. Yeah, trying to pull anything off here, but as you said, Scarzig, like I don't. Two recruit costs on the Raikou, good catch there. <laughs> yeah, true. I so don't. So one more think flower it's selecting uh, for Destiny. Another for Destiny. Raihan. The scoop up net. <laughs> oh. Okay, hang on. Scoop up net. This, we already know the Zigzagoon's been in the hand for a while. Was the energy already attached for a turn, though? Um, no, no, it was a Raihan attachment. Oh, it was a Raihan. Okay. Yes, so we Got do it. have an energy attachment. We need Sableye, Psychic Energy, uh, Scoop up net, Zigzagoon. It's almost yeah, that's there. A lot to ask. He yeah. just has to execute. I think he might be one card short. There also needs to be yeah, a pivot into it as well. So. This is game number one. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. I didn't even think. 11 minutes left on the clock, and we're only in game one right now. I've been staring so hard at all of these cards, I didn't even factor in. We're talking about, okay, what are all the plays we can make here? <laughs> it, there's a Kyogre. Oh, wait, there's a literally a The deck right gets there, more yeah. complicated the longer <laughs> the game goes on. Exactly, yeah. Because now you have, all these you have all these cards in hand, and it kind of gives you a cognitive overload, yeah. right? You have to be able to just put the cards you don't need into a separate hand on the side and just don't look at them anymore. All the cards yeah. you don't want. And I mean, that's, that's why Jackson, I think, navigates through these energies the way they do with, like, writing them down and making sure that they're noted uh, and mm -hmm. accounted for, because that's way easier than having to mentally track all of that. All right, so we see the Scoop Up Net. We see the Glarian Zigzagoon. We see the Sableye. There's the Psychic Energy. And we need one more scoop up net, correct? And I think that that is oh, what Jackson is missing. Unless uh, it is in the deck and he's trying to dig for it here in the 11th hour. Um, there's two, yeah, because there's two in the prize cards. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't can't know recall if, there was if one, one was used played. earlier. Raihan gets a yeah, switch cart. The lost zone again. I think just trying to figure out is there a way I can somehow pull this off and take my last two prize cards on this turn. That mana fee carrying so much weight in this matchup, as you can see for both players. Yeah, holding back the floodgate. Radiant Greninja comes to the active switch cart to bring it back to the bench, heal that damage off of it, and now Sableye is in the active. Yep, damage just vanishes. We do have that energy attachment for turn. As you pointed out, Skarzik, the other attachment was Raihan, so that is good to go on this Sableye, but I don't think we're going to see any sort of Zigzagoon ping plays here. We are just going to see those 12 damage counters come down on the field, and now it is back to Daniel. That mana fee has been eradicated here on Jackson's side, so it is over to Daniel to take this win, take that last prize card. Yep, there's a slot now open on the bench for Kyogre. Sableye comes down. Oh, but energy. we've got the other kid. We've got the other Sableye from the ordinary no, yeah, rod. Yeah, from a you while don't even ago. need it. There's a scoop up net. Bada boom, bada bing. After Jackson yep. struggled, yeah, sees yeah. The, he pulls the two prize cards, sees that the scoop up net he was missing was in the prizes the whole time. So devastating. If he had that scoop up net, would have been able to make that big play to run it back. But it took 
almost an hour to decide the first game of this incredibly complex lost box mirror match. Yep, but and Daniel now the players have a few minutes it. to try to find what's going to happen here in game two because the players need the win. The tie's not going to do it for them. Daniel, you can see, has already gotten five draws over the course of the Swiss round. Oh, yeah, definitely. When you're playing in these single prize matchups, you know it's going to take a very long time. So if you take game one, you're essentially pretty much going to win. It's very difficult to um, take all of those prize cards if not impossible <laughs> to do, depending on how much time you have left. So if Daniel can take this win, that is going to be huge. So congratulations, Daniel, on that mm. first win in this game, because this is going to be super important going into the second match. But also, anything can happen. I've seen uh, matches. We even saw this in a couple of our other regionals. If you start a Pokemon and then literally have nothing else and get KO'd, you could take a really quick win as well. So True. you never know what's going to happen it, in yeah, these matches. You Jackson never could tell. take it back. There could be a very, there could certainly be a very early, very easy win. You know, if Daniel prizes Heavy Ball and Manaphy, then suddenly it opens up Raiding Greninja immediately for Jackson to take the win or vice versa. Yeah, as you can see, Daniel does have those five ties there on the record. So very, and we can see very why. used to taking those ties. Yeah, exactly. We can see why. Seven minutes and about 30 seconds left on the clock. Such a long game one, but it really could have gone either way. It yeah. did come down to what was left in the prize cards for Jackson. And that's why it's so important for uh, in the early game to make sure you know exactly what is in your prize card yep. so that you can that it can help form your strategy for later in the game. But of course, it just didn't add up, unfortunately, for Jackson. There's so much you have to track. Yeah. I mean, we're sitting here, like, calculating math on these damage <laughs> I counters. Know, I like, know. this is why I don't play this deck. Uh, I, think, I think what it was was that Jackson kind of had an early gauge of where the scoop up nets were. Oh, yeah, and for sure. Just, for sure. It's, you can't look that deep into the future to say, oh, no I way. know I'm going to be backed into a corner and have to rely on a double scoop up net. Yeah, there's Zigzagoon no mind play. And because you have so much spread damage, not just Sableye, because Oh my gosh, the Raikou. not again. Oh, let's go. The scoop up nets in there. The Kyogre now in the uh, in the prizes for Daniel, but a lot of time. To, yeah, but because it's, it's, the last last, prize. it's the finale card. So yeah. you can get it with the heavy ball when you really need it. Jackson going to start with Sableye in the active. Daniel going to start us off with Zekrom in the active and has the battle VIP pass. Jackson being able to go second is massive here. If you can just get a couple, you know, uh, Colress and then one flower selecting your Cramorant's online. Jackson kind of missed out on that early tempo of getting the Cramorant up, but wasn't able to swap yeah. it out of the active, the Confei out of the active to actually get the attack. So maybe that's where this game makes a huge pivot where Jackson does get that first knockout after all. Yeah, it's kind of like you were saying in the prize cards as well, Scarze, that um, scoop up nets, you know, you can't map it that far out into the future, but that's a card that you look at in your deck. Mm -hmm. You want to know, that's one of the first cards you sometimes go to, to know how many pivots that you have. It's in more your likely deck, that it's you so use important. them already with Confe. Yeah. It is usually the scenario rather than, uh, oh, they're stuck in their prizes and I need them. Or, yeah. oh, I, I accidentally used them earlier for greedy plays. Well, I've but, seen players double scoop up net the Radiant Greninja to get mm -hmm. more concealed cards and stuff like that. No, that's definitely true. Um, when you have that Galarian Zigzagoon in your list, you're using the scoop up nets in a very different way. You almost have to conserve That's them fair. differently just because, um, you know, if you're burning them on Confies, which mm -hmm. is like the usual strategy, um, you know, it's easy to do that if that's what you're kind of doing. Or you're mm -hmm. moving damage off the board, especially in these one prize um, damage spread matchups. Like oh, we're yeah, and there's right the heavy now. ball opening up. Going to get that Kyogre now, right? Yeah, no Out one of the prize cards. <laughs> yeah. And then gets the easy, of course, the easy tracking of what else is in the prizes, which is really helpful. Yeah, so that is the Zekrom there in the active position. Pretty awkward because it's not um, not really relevant in this matchup. Um, it definitely slotted to take favor in other matchups here. So yep. having that's a bit of an awkward start here for Daniel, but I suppose um, not the worst. Yeah, you can still, you can still retreat it. Hopefully, Daniel doesn't come up short. I could see a very awkward situation where the Zekrom with that three retreat cost does get stranded in the active, and you just so happen to not get your switches. 
I mean, when you're talking about doing 60 damage to yourself, though, with the <laughs> wild shock move, that is not something you want to be doing in this matchup. So definitely a bit of an awkward start for Daniel. And maybe that could be what uh, comes down in this game as the uh, unfortunate turn of events here, because having that 130 HP uh, Pokemon being whittled away over time mm -hmm. is, is a possibility. But oh. it's not going to happen because yeah, we're just going to see a scooped up into the hands. Beautiful. Another scoop Another added reason. to the hand. Battle VIP pass going to be sent to the Lost Zone here. That tells us that Daniel's hand is gas. Doesn't need that other <laughs> Battle VIP pass. Yeah, most definitely. We got a Rangaroo coming down as well. This is so strong to get down in the early game because a Rangaroo allows you to take your bad cards, put them on top, and then send them to the Lost Zone with the flower selecting. So we got uh -huh. Zekrom going to the top of the deck. Could you just send that to the Lost Zone? As you already pointed out, Shelby, not needed whatsoever in this matchup. It's only a liability. Now we've got the escape rope. Brings a Rangaroo to the active. Benches another Comfey. And we've got a scoop up net in the hand, but oh, just gonna pass, playing it chill. Mm -hmm, I respect yeah. it. That, uh, yeah, you kind of have to take things slow here when you are up a game and there's only two minutes or three minutes left on the clock. You know, you're most likely not gonna be able to conclude this game. Mm -hmm. um, if I mean, there is potential for anything to happen, as we said, Skarzik, but. Uh, yeah, you just, I mean, you still want to play to the best of your ability. Of course, that Rangaroo for Daniel wasn't an option be, uh, early game, uh, last game, because mm -hmm. it was in the prize cards. So now being able to get that utility out of it in this game is pretty important as well. So now we are back over to Jackson here. Jackson has to figure out what they can do in this two minutes to take a win and then into a tie, which is really not what either of these players wanted to see. They wanted that W. They needed two wins mm -hmm. in order mm -hmm. to advance into top eight. So they do not want to see a tie. But if you've already taken a loss here, you just do what you can. You play it out. Mm -hmm. I, I, and to be fair, I do want to say, you know, full disclosure, that that game one was really dynamic. I think that both yeah, players huge. absolutely yeah. played their hearts out. We saw the maximum effectiveness of what both decks were capable of. I think it was a fantastic strategy overall on both sides. And it just happened to be that, you know, Jackson got unluckier <laughs> on the prize cards. But yeah, overall, definitely. we've got the Radiant Greninja with concealed cards. Cramorant's coming down. We've got two Comfey, and we just need to get the Sableye out of the active. And we could see a knock here from uh, Jackson Davies' side now, thanks to the Cramorant. Yeah, There's Luminion V as well in the hand. And, you know, Jackson benched that pretty early in game number one, and it ended up being a huge liability there later in the game to allow Daniel to take a, you know, threaten a two-prize knockout. Yeah, definitely. I think it was uh, pretty important for Jackson to play that in the last game, trying to line up the uh, early game aggression, having mm -hmm. to get that coal risk because it wasn't in hand. But unfortunately, it wasn't able to pay off anyway because we didn't see the spit innocently. So having t having had taken the first prize card, if that had gone to Jackson versus Daniel, that could have changed the tides a lot as well. So there's just so many tiny things that happen in this deck that make huge worlds of differences. Yeah, missing a prize, missing a beat, missing your opportunity to get that tempo in this mirror match is so important. So Comfy gets the air balloon, is able to retreat. Thanks to Chorus's experiment and two flower selectings, we've got the uh, spit instantly going on, and that's 110 onto the Radiant Greninja. Still alive. <laughs> we can clean this up later with a Radiant Greninja if Daniel doesn't get the mana feed down, or we can uh, clean it up with the Sableye here in a few turns. Yep, yeah, exactly. We did see, of course, that Zekrom was just scooped up, which I think is a good mm -hmm. utility of the scoop up net. Um, that Pokemon is just not relevant, so I think that was a good use of it. Of course, you only have four of them, so you have to pick and choose where you play those scoop up nets. There is no goon in deck for Daniel, um, so that's not a yeah, factor they're, they're purely for those. Used just yeah. for shuffling around the comp phase and filling up the yeah, lost or, zone. Yeah, or even just picking up damage if you need to that do that. Is that's true. Um, that's huge plays as well that you could potentially be mapping out because if you know you can deny your opponent prize cards where needed, you uh, could just do that as well. I would honestly love for you know this round to just get doubled and see them play out a full best of three. If they weren't limited by time, we would see so much dynamic like adaptation of the strategies, the back and forth yeah. and the ebb and flow of, you know, the early game choices having a massive ripple effect on the entire game. 
but just another concealed cards on the Radiant Greninja, getting a lot of value out of this still before it goes down. Three cards in the Lost Zone. We got a scoop up net. Taking that damage Taking up. Taking the damage <laughs> off it all. Oh, okay, never mind. We squeezed that in. Okay, perfect. They did everything they needed to showcase here for this best of three. Another flower selecting now in the active. I didn't see yeah, the didn't other see cards. The uh, scoop, scoop up, up net and, and an ordinary oh, odds. Hard okay. choice. So two scoop up nets have already been played so far for Daniel, but the th the third is going to go into the loss zone for that ordinary rod. Yeah, we saw how important just being able to continuously get the save alive back. Well, also to make sure you can get your mana fee as well back on board mm -hmm, if it mm -hmm. uh, is lost. But we did hit time here, I believe, for these players in the round. The clock's at zero zero there, as you can see. So. I think that that's that going to be it. Yeah, Daniel's yeah. going to be turn zero. There's no way to conclude this one absolutely in a single prize matchup. So Jackson just going to concede the match to Daniel. So congratulations to Daniel Altavilla on the journey still. Took Toronto Regionals in 2018 as the winner and could potentially do that still in Toronto here if the next game is won and headed into top eight. That. Also, great play as well from Jackson. Absolutely. If that first game, like that was, they were neck and neck. They were so close. Whenever it seemed like one player was going to pull ahead, the play, the opponent had the response, and that meant that they had to grind all the way down to the bottom of their decks, yeah. pull out all the stops, pull out all the plays, and if you know game number one had been a little bit more one-sided as one player bricking or coming up empty in the first couple turns, that would have been an early decision made, and then game number two, game number three, maybe play out. I think that it was just a perfect storm of uh, factors that made that first game go so long. The players were not trying to slow down the game by any means. It's very yeah. complicated, and I, did, I think that we got our perfect excuse there. <laughs> and as the longer the game went, the more factors and the more plays you have to be aware of because your yeah. opponent has 20 cards in hand. They could do anything to you. Yeah, definitely. Mapping out those strategies is huge. And when you're playing a one prize deck, you almost expect to take a lot of ties or um, have that mm -hmm. kind of on your radar because because of the way, uh, how long it takes, as you said, there's so many decisions being made as well, especially in these mirror matches against other one prize decks too. So it's pretty huge uh, to make sure that you are doing everything you can to get to that win in the first game because that's where um, things can really change. And that's the thing with other decks, you can kind of just see, okay, uh, I'm most likely not gonna win this. Yeah, maybe I could like really grind it out and I'm not gonna scoop because of, uh, or sorry, and not scoop, but mm. I'm going to scoop because I would just rather get into a more favorable game. But these yeah. decks, you're not gonna be going to three. Like it is very, unless something crazy happens, it's very rare to go into a third match. So you just have to hope that you can pull off everything needed in mm -hmm. that first game to take the win. And I think, too, both players also have a lot of, like, comeback mechanics built in. Even if you fall behind early, you suddenly have Colrest that activates your Mirage Gate, and Raikou takes two prizes and brings you back into the game. Or I'm behind, the but Kyogre. suddenly I get my Kyogre and my Sableye <laughs> to take two prizes and bring me back into the game. Other single prize matchups sometimes are a little bit more cut and dry, where you miss a beat or two in the early game. But having the complexity, the comeback potential, the plays and counterplays with the saving private Manaphy style <laughs> game plan, you know, adds so much complexity to the match. And there's no surprise, right, that Daniel had the five ties heading up into this match because he's yeah. taking it very seriously and trying to showcase the best Pokemon TCG gameplay he can. Yeah, and maybe we will hear about those five ties and how those matches went because we do have a winner interview lined up with Daniel Altavilla. So let me throw it over to Chip.